To start with the bleeding obvious, vision is the process or the collection of processes by which we gather information about the outside world and model it and use it to adapt our behaviour using the medium of light. Specifically, the medium of visible light, a relatively narrow band of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths from roughly 400 to 700 nanometers. Light is a pretty good medium for gathering information. In some ways, it is the definitive one. It propagates really fast over long distances and even through a vacuum. It travels, at least to a reasonable approximation, in straight lines. It interacts with matter and it participates in chemical reactions, meaning that it's possible for biology to build detectors for it. And it's plentiful. There's a lot of it about, at least during the day, thanks to the enormous burning nuclear furnace up there in the sky. Vision is so useful that it has evolved numerous times over the history of life on Earth, with a number of variations in the underlying implementation details. There are a bunch of different configurations for the optical sense organs. The eyes of a fly or a flatworm or a scallop are really quite different from our own, although some of the underlying biochemical machinery, the proteins used for light detection, for example, are relatively well conserved. We'll touch on those briefly later on. Vision is also so useful that it's a bit overpowering. It's the dominant sense for most humans, and it's one that radically shapes the way that we understand the world in which we live both literally and also metaphorically. The vocabulary of vision pervades our language, encompassing much more than just optical detection. We say, oh, I see, meaning I understand, or let's see, meaning we intend to find out, or we'll just see about that, meaning I will act to prevent it. The word vision doesn't just refer to the sense of sight, it also extends to intellectual brilliance and creativity, to drive and ambition, to clarity of thought, to divine revelations. We describe a great creator as a visionary, somebody who predicts the future as a seer or a clairvoyant, literally one who sees clearly. Much of human culture revolves around the visual. Painting and drawing, movies and photography, video games, practical necessities like food and clothing come to us wrapped in all kinds of layers of visual aesthetics. The written word is primarily mediated, read through our eyes. We have all manner of advanced technology dedicated to the enhancement of vision, microscopes and cameras and telescopes, and also to the production of visual stimuli from paper and pencils to printing and screens and heads-up displays and VR headsets. It is one of the major ways in which we interact with computers and software, often the major component of the user interface. At the same time, vision is complex and fragile and there are many ways in which it can go wrong. Visual impairments are extremely common. People may have difficulty with focus or resolution, close up or far away or when you get to be ancient like me, often both. People, particularly men, may have trouble distinguishing between different colours. People may be unable to see in dim or bright conditions. They may lose parts of their visual field to obstructions in the eyes or 
degeneration of the tissues of the retina or loss or damage to pathways in the brain. Some of these problems may be mitigated with technology. Very many of us wear glasses or contact lenses either for some specific tasks or indeed all the time. Other problems are much more difficult to address. So, given both vision's centrality to so many human endeavours and also the many ways in which it can fail, it is important to attempt to understand how it works, what it does, what its strengths and weaknesses are, and to try and find ways that we can make the most of it whilst also maximising accessibility for those who have visual impairments.